morning. Good morning. Uh, it, is, it is well with my soul. Thank you, Dorothea, for playing today. And it is indeed well to be here with all of you uh, this morning. I hope you enjoyed uh, getting a little extra rest at home for our single service today. Uh, and it's just, it's nice that it's not so bitterly cold this morning and to see so many new faces. Uh, not new, I should say. It's just good to see you once again. Um, so a couple things to note. Today, obviously, of course, is uh, annual meeting Sunday, and we will be doing that online via Zoom. You should have gotten an email in your inbox Thursday with details for that. Uh, and if not, the information is right on the homepage of our website, so you can go there later today for the, uh, the reports and the link for the Zoom meeting. Again, that'll be at 12 o'clock today. So after service, go home, get some lunch, get your PJs, whatever you gotta do, and then sign on at 12 o'clock and we'll do the work of the church together. Uh, and I'm thankful for um, all the work that's gone into it. I look forward to seeing you uh, maskless via Zoom later today. A um, couple other things uh, I, I want to share. Uh, again, we're kind of in this period of a little more uh, restriction uh, because of COVID. And so today, uh, congregational singing uh, will be limited to your heart if you can, or you can sing very softly in your mask, whatever you got to do. But we only have a few more weeks of this. Uh, our restoration team met this last week, and we are planning on getting back to the old new normal that we were at in December, um, mid-February. So February 16th, that is a Wednesday, Wednesday, we'll be back for our Wednesday night programming and, and food and education and all those things and back to a more, um, a more normal way of doing church in these times. And of course, uh, we'll continue to monitor, monitor things as we are able, but we think this is a good direction for us. So looking forward to that. It'll be good to be back uh, Wednesday nights. Uh, two other final announcements before we move into our service. Uh, as you may know, Bonnie Payne uh, passed away this past week on Wednesday. Uh, and then yesterday, Jerry Duffy died um, at home uh, yesterday. And so I'd like you to join me in a moment of prayer um, at this time. Good and gracious God, we, we ask for your spirit to be upon the families of Bonnie and Jerry in this time of grief and loss. Strengthen them with your spirit. Help them to see that your promises are good and true and that the end, that death is not the end for us. Comfort your people who mourn, mourn and help us to see your light in all things. Amen. As we trust in our Lord and Savior to comfort us in our grief, we also trust our Lord and Savior to comfort us in and through this life. And so we begin today with our confession and forgiveness, and I invite you to stand as you are able. We gather this, name, this day in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, the Blessed Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways 
to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead to sin and has made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. You may be seated. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Take
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love your command through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading for today is from the prophet Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow to build and to plant. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 71. Please respond with the print in bold. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Good morning. Uh, Just a few things before we get to our gospel today. Um, All of our gospel readings, really pretty much during January, have been a continuation of one story. See if you remember these things. It began um, with Jesus' baptism by John in the Jordan. Remember how when he came out of the water, the Spirit descends and this voice from heaven gives him a new identity. This is my beloved Son, the one with whom I am pleased. So that same Spirit then leads him into the wilderness where he is tested and, and formed for his upcoming ministry. In the wilderness, during that 40-day period, Jesus lives into his identity as as a beloved child of God, and he claims for himself what his ministry will be because of who he is, because of that identity. Then last Sunday's lesson followed right on the heels of that baptism, that wilderness time in Jesus' life. The Spirit of God is still present, still active, still guiding him. And now Jesus, filled with that Spirit, gives his inaugural address, his ministry kickoff speech, where he lays out his plan, his his vision for the ministry that he is beginning. So I just got to back up to last week's a bit. It goes, says like this, then Jesus filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, so he's going home, hometown, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. I like that that was his custom, what he did every, every week. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. 
He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Remember that spirit that came on Jesus in his baptism? Because he has anointed me, that baptism, that anointing, to bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him, and then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So Jesus has been brought through the waters of baptism, has been identified and claimed by God. He has wandered in the wilderness for 40 days. This has parables, uh, parallels to the people of Israel, right? Passing through the Red Sea, wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, um, Jesus, being formed into the people of God. Jesus is sort of paralleling the history of Israel. He has been filled and led and appointed by the Spirit for this, to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So here's something that the people of God tend to forget. Always have forgotten, probably always will forget. And that is that God is biased. God is biased in favor of the poor, the little ones, the outcast, the marginalized, the refugees, the disenfranchised, the hurting, the oppressed. Just read your Bible. It's all in there over and over again, but people tend to forget. In his home town and time, Jesus is preaching this good news to people who see poverty more as a sign of God's disfavor than favor, who see blindness and other afflictions as a sign of God's judgment, who maybe understand oppression and imprisonment as just getting what you deserve. Eh, not so different than a lot of our perceptions today, is it? To the poor, the imprisoned, the blind, the oppressed, Jesus proclaims God's love and favor, God's good news. Just in case people have forgotten, maybe because people tend to forget, Jesus speaks what has always been the case when it comes to God. Because this is a message that runs counter to the prevailing wisdom of, of the day, and people do tend to forget, don't we? We can imagine that among Jesus' listeners that day, there were some who heard his words as an unwelcome critique of their worldview their understanding of how God worked, God's justice. I mean, it makes sense, right? Those who suffer must have done something to deserve it. Uh, what goes around comes around. We still say that today. We can also imagine that there were other people listening that day, perhaps those who were themselves poor, oppressed, suffering in some way and wondering what they had done to bring this on themselves, who actually did hear Jesus' words as good news, as gospel, as liberating and life-giving, as a welcome surprise. In his first, <clears throat> in his first public address, Jesus reaffirms God's primary concern and favor for those that the world tends to overlook. <clears throat> Jesus reminds his listeners of what God is doing. Not a new thing, but an often forgotten thing. 
a life-giving, transforming, reconciling, liberating, saving thing. Which brings us, finally, to the Gospel reading for today. This is the, the climactic ending of the story that has been going on since Jesus' baptism and the reaction of the people to Jesus' prophetic words. It begins favorably enough, but it rapidly deteriorates when Jesus um, challenges their assumptions of superiority. Okay. Um. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, isn't this Joseph's son? Isn't this Joseph's son? I mean, here's our, our hometown boy made good, right? We know him. He's one of us. We know his family. He went to school with my boys, right? This is Joseph's son. We, we know him. He said to them, Jesus said, Doubtless you will quote me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do also here in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. So word about Jesus has been spreading, about what he has done, about what he has said. And the people in his hometown are like, Hey, since he's our guy, I mean, just think what wonders he's going to do here. It's got to be even more spectacular than it was in Capernaum because, I mean, we're his people. He's ours. And Jesus said to him, said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. What? The truth is, he says, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heaven was shut up, shut up for three years and six months and there was a severe famine all over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, none of the widows in Israel, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. An outsider. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. Jesus is saying to his hometown people, don't assume you have an insider's advantage. Don't think you're more favored than those you look down on. Remember, God has always worked among the outsiders, the foreigners, an inconsequential widow in Zarephath, even blessing a Syrian who had leprosy. You're not so special just because you're Israelites. Well, when they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Oh, you're getting good at that. So how quickly Jesus' hometown people turn on him once he directs them away from themselves and to people that they don't want to believe God has any concern for. People they think are beneath them, but people who are precious in God's sight. People for whom Jesus announces God's good news, God's favor. Well, today, as we are preparing for the annual meeting of our congregation, as we gather to make decisions about the future directions of our shared ministry, I think it's good to pause and recognize and remember this thing that God has always been about and continues to be about in Jesus and is about through those who would follow Jesus. My dear siblings in Christ, today the Holy Spirit is upon us as the living body of Christ in this time and place. The Holy Spirit is upon us as the heart and the hands of Jesus active in the world today. And the Holy Spirit has anointed us 
to proclaim God's good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to free the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is the good news. This is the gospel. This is God's story for this creation. It's a story that is all too often forgotten, all too often drowned out in the strident predictions of doom and gloom, of fear and hatred, of conflict and mistrust that so influence us these days. It's a story that is too often forgotten, too often submerged in the, the quest for power and privilege that is so often achieved at the expense of those whom Jesus would have us remember and favor. It's a story that now and always has run counter to the story of our time, our culture, just like it ran counter to the story of Jesus' time and culture. It's a story, frankly, that risks being chased out of town and thrown off a cliff. This good news for the poor, this gospel, this God story, is a story that's different than the conventional wisdom of our time. It's a sport, story that speaks of light rather than darkness, of inclusion rather than isolation, of welcome rather than rejection, of hope rather than despair, love rather than fear, and life rather than death. It's a story of endless wonder and possibility and love and life. This is God's story. It's Jesus' story and it's our story. It is this story that we are called to tell over and over because it's so easy for us to forget. We who are Christ's church have been entrusted with this story. We have been and continue to be called and anointed and filled with the Holy Spirit in order to carry Christ uh, and speak God's good news to a world in pain and darkness through what we say and through what we do to bring good news to the poor, freedom to the oppressed, to proclaim the year of God's favor. That's why we're here. This is why we exist. This is who we are. And I am grateful for our partnership in this good gospel work. Amen. Shall clap their hands, the dry lands gush 
with springs, the hills and mountains shall break forth with singing. We shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace, as all the world in wonder echoes shalom. Would you please stand as you are able, as we confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. By your word, O God, life sprung forth from the earth. It is your word that gives life to your people. Wherever your word is proclaimed, may ears and hearts be open to receive it. Let the bearers of your gospel be received with gladness, and may false prophets be put to shame. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, in these Dark and cold months, we find ourselves longing for spring and delighting in the lengthening of our days. See us through cold nights and let your sun shine anew each morning. Let its rays proclaim your glory and spur us to take tender care of that which you have entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the world honors the memory of those who fell victim to the demonic violence of the Holocaust, may all people repent of the sins of racism, xenophobia, and nationalism. Purge our world of these sicknesses which fester in our hearts and spew forth hatred, division, and violence. Free our world of genocide, and may the nations who have committed such atrocities repent and offer atonement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, in you we take refuge, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Hear the prayers and see the tears of those who cry out to you this day in sorrow and sickness and suffering. May your Holy Spirit bring comfort, and may that same Spirit empower each of us to be agents of mercy of healing, and of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, for generations you have blessed this congregation with your spirit and your word. Thousands of disciples have been baptized in its fonts, affirmed their faith in its sacred spaces, celebrated in its halls, and learned your word in its many rooms. For all this and more, Lord, we offer our thanks. As we prepare prepare to do the work of our annual meeting, we ask for your continual blessing over every undertaking. Let your spirit blaze within us, and may all we do as a congregation and as people of faith be pleasing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, for supper, he took the cup gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. 
This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Together let us pray as our Lord and Savior has taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome. I invite you to be seated and follow the guidance of our ushers.
you please stand? May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. Amen. Now friends, as you go forward this day, may you know and trust that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord's face will shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord will look upon you with kindness and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.